The Ebertists French, Ebertistes, or Exaggerators French, Exagérés were a radical revolutionary political group associated with the populist journalist Jacques Ebert, a member of the Cordeliers Club. They came to power during the Reign of Terror and played a significant role in the French Revolution. The Ebertists were ardent supporters of the dechristianization of France and of extreme measures in service of the Terror, including the Law of Suspects enacted in 1793. They favored the direct intervention of the state in economic matters in order to ensure the adequate supply of commodities, advocating the national requisition of wine and grain. The leaders went to the guillotine on the 24th of March 1794. Topic: <laughs> Rise to popularity. The rise in power of the Ebertists can be largely attributed to the popularity of Ebert's newspaper, Le Per de Chesney. This newspaper, which purported to present the frank opinions of Per de Chesney, a fictional working-class furnace maker, had a large following amongst the sans culottes. The government-funded distribution of Le Per de Chesney to the French armies, a policy arranged by the Ebertist Minister of War Jean-Baptiste Noël Bouchot in 1793, widened support and sympathy for Ebertist ideas. On 24 May 1793, the newly appointed Commission of Twelve ordered the arrest of Ebert, who had been using Le Per de Chesney to incite violence against members of the Girondin faction. The tremendous public outcry and civil unrest which ensued rapidly resulted in Ebert's release. However, rioting continued, culminating in a series of insurrections. On 31 May 1793, a large crowd of sans-culotte agitators surrounded the National Convention in an attempt to force its accession to their demands, namely the dissolution of the Commission of Twelve, the arrest of a list of Girondin deputies, attacks on the rich and the restriction of suffrage to sans-culottes. The Commission was abolished, but on 2 June 1793 the crowds, now supported by National Guard forces headed by Ebertist and newly appointed Commandant General François Henriot, returned. Henriette threatened to set fire to the convention if the offending Girondin deputies were not expelled. Ultimately, the arrest of 29 Girondins was decreed, marking the end of the Girondin faction's political power. Following the assassination of Jean-Paul Merritt by a Girondin sympathizer in July 1793, Ebert positioned himself as Merritt's natural successor in the affections of those who had shared the dead man's ultra-revolutionary beliefs. The Ebertists' popularity grew. Their evident and increasingly destabilizing influence was disturbing to many less extreme revolutionary politicians, including leading Montagnard figures such as Georges Danton and Maximilien Robespierre, the latter of whom especially disapproved of the Ebertists' atheism. Topic: <laughs> Accusations and denouncement. Over the course of October 1793, a number of accusations were leveled against prominent Ebertists by Fabre d'Aglantine, a friend and supporter of Danton. Fabre claimed to have discovered a foreign plot in which Stanislas Marie Mellard and Anacarsis Klutz, among others, were implicated as agents. This succeeded in casting suspicion on the Ebertist faction. However, Fabre himself was rapidly revealed to have been acting in part as part of an elaborate attempt to conceal his own involvement in a scandal surrounding the liquidation of the French East India Company and his credibility was thereby diminished. In December 1793, the journalist Camille de Molins—whose political opinions had long been aligned with those of Danton and Robespierre—began publishing a journal, Le Vieux Cordelier, aimed in part at the discrediting of the Ebertist faction. The journal's title alluded to the fact that the Cordeliers Club, formerly a moderate revolutionary society dominated by the policies of Danton, had become overrun by sans-culotte Ebertists and their sympathizers. De Molins attacked Ebert for bringing the French Republic into disrepute through his writings, claiming that when the tyrants of Europe wish ed to vilify the Republic, to make their slaves believe that France is covered with the darkness of barbarism, that Paris is peopled with vandals. They reprinted Le Per de Chesney. He also mocked Ebert for having pretended to be a man of the people and a representative of the sans culottes when in fact he had profited handsomely from the contracts his follower Bouchot had secured to distribute Le Per de Chesney to the armies. 
In turn, Ebert accused de Molins of hypocrisy, pointing out that his current opposition to violence and extremism in addition to attacking ultra-revolutionary excesses, de Molins had called for an end to the terror stood in sharp contrast to his support for such tactics in a 1789 pamphlet, Discours de la Lantern aux Parisiens, which had advocated the execution of those opposed to revolution. The vitriolic exchange continued throughout the winter of 1793–1794, ultimately contributing to the downfall of both de Molins and Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> Fall from power Following the February 1794 recall of Ebertist deputy Jean-Baptiste Carrier from Nantes, where he had been engaged in mass executions to suppress the Vendéan revolts, the Ebertists attempted to stage a popular revolt, hoping to mimic that which had led to the downfall of the Girondins. On 4 March 1794, Carrier and Ebert veiled the bust of liberty at the Cordeliers Club, declaring according to ritual a state of insurrection. They had hoped to demand that the National Convention expel Robespierre and his Montagnard supporters. However, the city of Paris did not rise and the Paris Commune failed to provide military support for the coup. The Ebertists were denounced by Louis Antoine de Saint Just and Robespierre, and the leaders of the faction were arrested on 13 March 1794. Twenty of them, including Chamet, Clutes, Antoine Francois Mamoro, and Ebert, were tried before the Revolutionary Tribunal and convicted. On 24 March 1794, they went to the guillotine. Notable Ebertists Gallery <laughs> <laughs>